I'm Gary Bambage. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to talk about six of the latest, most revealing and huge updates in the world of cruising that I think are going to impact you enormously, starting with this one. For me, one of the most revealing updates is something that all of the heads of the big cruise corporations have said, and that is that they will not start cruising until they get it right and not necessarily on the dates that are published, which are largely August the 1st at the time of recording. Every single CEO has come out in the last week or two and made that very clear. And that makes sense because it doesn't make any sense for them to start cruising until they are 100% sure that there is no outbreak or any incident on board, because that would then absolutely hammer cruising completely. So for example, Richard Fain, who's the head of the Royal Caribbean Group, he said, we're not saying we are confident we are starting on August the 1st. We won't come back until we are absolutely sure we have done everything we can do to protect the safety of our guests and crew. Frank Del Rio, who runs the Norwegian Cruise Line Group, so that's Oceania, Region 7 Sea, and of course Norwegian, he said recently, we want to do this right. And again, he stressed that doing it right was more important than the dates that are being advertised. Even Arnold Donald from the Carnival Group, who had very publicized dates of August the 1st to start cruising, they're all stressing that date is not set in stone, doing it right is. What are the implications of this for you as a cruiser? It's really important if you are booking cruises, particularly in 2020, based on the cruises that are advertised, do not assume that they are set in stone. Until the cruise lines are confident they've got it right, they're not going to sell. Of course, really importantly about getting it right for the cruise lines is they have to have sign off between the Center for Disease Control, the CDC in the US, and themselves. And so if you are booking cruises, bear in mind they may be canceled, you may be handing over money, which will, you will eventually have to claim back in refunds or future cruise credit. If you are unsure, why don't you just wait until the cruise lines are up and running before you book. The second really significant and important update is all of those cruise leaders have also stressed that it's not going to be one big bang of cruising. It's going to be in a phased and restricted way. They're going to bring out a number of ships, see how it goes, adjust, and then start to bring their fleets back into service. Also important because a lot of the ships now have been put in cold layup, where they're basically down to a really basic operating level, and it's gonna take quite a lot of time and money to get those back up and running, including getting crew back. If you look at Carnival, they have only put eight of their 27 ships on schedule for the startup of cruising when they're hoping to start cruising. So it's gonna be a slow, steady, and measured way of starting cruising. So again, when you're booking a cruise, make sure that you've understood, are one of those ships and those itineraries definitely going to be part of the rollout when cruising starts up again. A third, another significant update, which does have massive implications, is it also looks very much like cruising is going to be very regional and initially targeted very much at the local traveler. And that's for all sorts of reasons. First of all, there's quite a few ports that have said they're going to be closed to cruise ships for a period of time. So for example, Australia has announced that they will allow no cruise ships until at least the middle of September. The Seychelles being more dramatic, saying not until 2022. Even the Grand Cayman in the Caribbean have said it's unlikely that they're going to open to cruising until quarter three or maybe even quarter four. Argentina, which is of course really important for some of the South American cruisers, and once the Antarctic season opens up, they are not allowing in any international travelers until at least September. Some of the EU countries still have in place 14-day quarantines if you fly in, and one of the most recent ones, for example, the UK is just introducing that in June and will be evaluating that. Of course, some of the other countries like Italy and Spain are talking about lifting that in time for summer. So there's lots of restrictions on where people can cruise to and how many international travelers can actually come into a country. So it's very likely that cruisers are going to focus a lot on the drive to market. So for example, in Florida, people can actually get to ports really easily and don't have to rely on flights as they start up again. A lot of the cruise lines are also talking they might start up in some regions like China, for example, for Chinese guests because they are much further along in the curve of dealing with the whole pandemic. We've also seen in Norway, for example, Hütte Gröten are reintroducing one of their coastal voyages, but just for Norwegian passengers, no international passengers, no foreign passengers. We've seen in the United States that two of the big river cruising lines 
American Cruise Lines and American Queen Steamboat Company. They're both going to be introducing during the summer sailings within the rivers of the US. Silver Sea have been talking about how they're trying to talk to the Australian government about including Silver Sea and some cruising within the bubble. They're talking about creating between Australia and New Zealand just for Australian and New Zealand passengers. There's also been a lot of talk amongst European river cruisers about them starting up, particularly focusing on residents who are within the Schengen area. That means they can move between European countries as the borders start opening very easily. This could also be big for travellers in the UK where there could be a chance of focusing on round the UK cruises because again you can board UK based ships out of Southampton which basically calling on all UK ports. So we're seeing a lot of evidence that the cruise lines are likely to focus on the regional ports, regional areas of strength using passengers from that particular country initially as they get things going. So that's really important if you're looking at cruising, want to get back to cruising really quickly and speedily, focus on the cruises that are really close at home to you and particularly ones that perhaps don't require you crossing borders to get to the cruise. A fourth update which has been floating around by a number of the cruise lines is we're likely to see an increase of cruises to nowhere. Now this is easier in some regions than it is in others. So if we take a look at Asia for example, Genting which is really a big player in Asia, they have cruise lines like Dream Cruise Line and Star. They actually also by the way own Crystal as well but they're talking about introducing cruises to nowhere for their Asian customers who like to go on shorter cruises anyway and are perhaps more drawn to the actual just going out on the ship and less concerned about the ports and it's going to be much easier again just going from port sea days and back to a port. We've also seen a lot of the cruise lines that operate in the Caribbean that have their own private islands talking about this could be a possibility of having cruises to nowhere or cruises to their private islands to comply with the law in the US which does actually require all ships that are not flagged within the US that they have to call on a foreign port before they can return to the US. But private islands are counted as foreign ports because they're normally part of places like the Bahamas for example. So for example the CEO of the Royal Caribbean line Mr. Bailey has said that he sees for example Perfect Day at Coco Key as potentially being a key part of the way that they can get cruising up. So it's kind of cross between cruises to nowhere or cruises to private islands. So again if you're looking at getting back into cruising really quickly one of the big implications of that is focus on kind of cruises to nowhere or again cruises which use things like private islands. For me another revealing update was something that's been mentioned by a couple of the CEOs and that's about the fact that new ships rather than older ships are likely to come back quicker. And that's very interesting because we saw again for using the example of Royal Caribbean where Richard Fain spoke about the fact that their big new ships are actually much more efficient and leverage costs in a way. So for example they can actually break even with even around about 30% occupancy whereas if they want to go with the older ships they're probably going to need over 50% occupancy. So again if you're looking at booking a cruise and you want to go as soon as possible focus perhaps on the newer ships in all of these fleets. Another really interesting update that has actually gone under the radar a lot is the reminder that a lot of the rules particularly in the US with the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, all of their no sell orders and all of their requirements they're working on with the cruise lines are for ships over 250 passengers. That's really significant because there are quite a few cruise lines that operate in the United States that are under 250 passengers and they've actually just formed through this whole pandemic a specific organization which is called the US Small Overnight Passenger Boat Operators Coalition, so a bit of a long name. But they have quite a few cruise lines in there. So for example they have American Cruise Lines, American Queen Steamboat Company, Blount Small Ship Adventures, Lindblad Expeditions, Uncruise Adventures and these cruise lines operate a whole mix of cruises, some of which go into places like Alaska and they have lobbied really hard to actually get up and running really really quickly. What's really important is what the association is saying is they have to make sure they comply much more with the FDA regulations than the Center for Disease Control. Obviously they're working with them. If you really want to get on a cruise really quickly and you're based in the US, take a look at some of those small cruise lines with under 250 passengers because they are likely to find ways of cruising even faster than the big cruise lines. There is a constant flow of updates and news about cruising. These are six 
developments that I think have massive importance and implication for you as cruisers. Hope you find that helpful. I have loads more videos, tips, advice, and updates. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?